Hello, this video is in response to a forum user on the shapeoko.com forums that has been asking me a lot of questions about my um, Shapeoko 2 setup and this video is going to be primarily about the electronic setup I have going so for just reference I'm using um, Linux CNC as my controlling system so I've got to use obviously a parallel port to connect from the computer to the electronics that drive the stepper motors. Um, I'm using a, a C10 board or breakout board from CNC4PC.com um, that's then wired out to these little breakout boards that I made out of perf board that have a Pololu DRV8825 um, stepper motor driver board uh, mounted to them. I have two power supplies that are important here. I have a 5 volt power supply that is running the 5 volt um, or power for this breakout board and the 5 volt power for the or section of the Pololu drivers. I also have a, a um, 36 volt well I actually have two 36 volt 11 amp power supplies um, each one of those power supplies is driving um, two of the Plolu drivers. So basically what I have going on is, as you can see the breakout board, you basically have pins uh, two and three are the step and direction of the X axis. And they just basically go off the breakout board like this and go over to the X axis um, driver board. They go right in here, these two points. These two wires are the uh, positive and negative 5 volt. Then over here you have the four wires that go to the stepper motor that's attached to the X axis. And then you have the 36 volt positive and negative coming in here. The cap or the capacitor is uh, basically just there for some uh, simple op or over voltage protection. Uh, this was a uh, suggestion that is on the Pololu website. So that's basically just a very simple uh, protection. They, they suggest doing that because as they, I think, describe it, that a power supply can get even a 12 volt power supply, which is technically within the voltage specifications for this um, driver, could spike to over 45 volts which is the maximum voltage of this driver board. So this is just a precaution. Um, the dip switch um, component here is just to select the micro stepping of the, of the driver. So that's basically how that all works. It's very, very simple. And the PC power supply that's back here is just driving this fan that's blowing on the, on the drivers. Um, if I flip up this, you can see all of the connections or the jumper basically jumpers that have jumped between the breakout pins on the on the actual board and the screw terminals so that's very very simple construction it did not cost me too much to make these things and yeah they're, they're pretty nice I'm happy with them they work very well so far the C10 board also is working out very nicely because it's a bi-directional board so both it's designed to send signals out from the parallel and also receive signals in so while this section here is all the my stepper motor um, signals all of this right here is my limit switches so that's that's basically how that works and then you have this setup where I have the the main or the 5 volt power coming in to it right here and you have a couple wires going off to the to the Pololu drivers that's just then daisy chained out probably not the best setup there but it works fine for this for just preliminary um, setup I probably might change that later on but I don't know it works so I'm happy with it right now so that's my setup on that end um, one other thing to note is that if you're if you're going to be moving from Linux CNC from like 
Garble or the buildlog.net um, stepper shield that uses Garble as well technically. Um, you'll have, well on the, on the standard Garble shield you only have three drives and you're actually connecting the two um, Y stepper motors uh, together but you know opposite of each other. And on the buildlog.net shield that reactive substance cells uh, you basically have a little pin that you just, or a little jumper that you you select that basically makes two of the of the stepper motor boards uh, set up for dual Y. Now in Linux CNC and I would imagine uh, in Mach 3 as well you'll have something somewhat like this where you're able to select uh, one of the step or one of the Y direction pins to be inverted, which you can kind of see right there. Uh, basically, I have two pins that are sending uh, both Y directions, and then two pins that are sending uh, the Y step. The Y step obviously doesn't have to be inverted, but the direction does for one of them since the two motors are actually facing each other. So that's that's all you have to do to make it work. There's only one other caveat that I'd like to point out right now and that is if I can mouse over here and click on this if I go into past that the parallel port configuration uh, part of this wizard you have this you have a the ability to configure uh, each um, axis and there's a test this axis button I would highly recommend uh, if you are setting this kind of setup up with a shape oko that you um, that you take at least one of the Y motor belts off of the machine before you do this because there is a bug in the in the setup wizard that does not send signals to both Y motors. It only sends signals to one. So if you have belts on both of them and you try moving it using this test, um, this access test um, component of the wizard, you're going to probably have some problems because one of the motors is going to move and the other one is going to, the other one is going to actually be, you know, still powered up, so it's going to be trying to hold its position. Uh, I don't think that you'll be happy with the results of that. So I highly recommend taking at least one of the belts off and you know testing it because it is important to test the the axis and get the velocity and acceleration you know config or numbers figured out for your for your stepper motors and driver boards and understand exactly how fast you can move the thing without it missing steps reliably so just a little precaution that I would suggest doing if you're using Linux CNC and you know after after you get out of the wizard the the actual software runs both motors just fine. It's just for some reason there's a little glitch here that doesn't allow that. It's probably just an oversight on the programmers that really didn't imagine using, you know, dual motors for one axis, but uh, it is totally capable of doing it. It's just that you have to uh, think about what you're doing and make sure you don't make mistakes like this. Uh, so I think that is that is basically my setup. It's not very complex, and yeah, so thanks for watching, and I hope this was helpful to a lot of people. Um, I'm using this, you know, video recording of all these things to just document everything that I've done so that I can keep track of changes, and I think it's just fun to do, so hopefully this is helpful to, some, to somebody at least, so I'll leave you with that.